What y'all doing down there? What y'all What's doing? your pretty little ass doing down there? <laughs> Come on, sit on my horse. <laughs> <laughs> your body, my mum's brain, and my mum's body in your brain. Yeah. Like I'm sitting on the on the plane, like Pete's crying to quarterback. I'm not changing the floor because a donkey could slip. Oh my God, who are you? Hello and welcome to the Therapy Crouch with me, Abby Clancy. Uh, me, Peter Crouch. I'm very tan, babe. Uh, yeah, well, we've been on holiday, haven't we? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I really enjoyed it. Airport Ab, bizarrely was rained right back in. You've you've listened. You know what? And I you've was, took it on board. I was trying to make a conscious effort to, you know, not stress. I, I've been so excited for this holiday. Um and I just didn't want to, you know, put out put out any bad vibes at all. I'll and be honest was, with you, you didn't. I know. You uh, you were really really good. But I think it's cuz I was so organized. I was ready. I was packed. I I just took over all your job so I didn't have to moan at you for anything. Oh, okay. So it was all good. Well, I I liked it. I really enjoyed it. It was all good. It was good. It was it was the airport experience was just a it was just really nice. We managed to get our airport sausage. <laughs> I sent you a picture of them, Ross. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Don't recall that. But they didn't look out they didn't look as appealing. The airport sausage, they tasted good though, didn't they? Yeah, you know when it's like, it's like most meals I make actually, they don't look as good as they taste. Mm. Yeah, they look like shite, but they taste amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I, I, had I don't to... know if you've noticed what I'm sporting today as well. I, 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 I'm ashamed you've actually brought that up yourself. I was just going to ignore the whole outfit. What do you mean? You can't ignore it. <laughs> you know what? What's um, funny about Pete's like Gucci outfit now? You know, obviously it costs a fortune, and I think because he's had that much stick, he doesn't go out out outdoors in it. He just he's got like the loungewear, Gucci loungewear now. <laughs> yeah, it's chic loungewear. This is wear. how he rolls. He's such a baller. It's chic loungewear. It's not like you know. I might show us your down feet. The... Show us your feet. What these, these socks? <laughs> are they dirty at the bottom? They are filthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling you not to go well, out in the garden. I haven't taken them off since I've had them. I don't want you to walk in the garden and walk through the house because that's what you're walking in the house. Listen, if I'm going to pay that for a pair of socks, I'm going to fucking get some use out of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've worn them every day. <laughs> but listen, let's let's be honest. I look casual, chic. So I saw Jack Grealish had the exact same outfit on. I did say, didn't I? But the second, so He's that's in a pod. that's three outfits now that Pete's got the same as Jack. What the other two? Yeah. yeah, the um, the towel and embossed Gucci shorts with the red and green satin stripe down the side. You know, old Jack was out in that the other day. Well, I don't know who's copying who, really. <laughs> Maybe I'm trailblazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you're FaceTime and Jack Reelish from home. Listen, he's a, he's an incredibly stylish young man, as I said on the previous podcast, and 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 so am I. I'm, I'm an older gentleman now, but. I'm but still I, prefer, I, I prefer you to look a bit more like, you know, Italian. Yeah, but that's what that's what I like to look like as well. But I just think, you know, like in your linen shirt, your kind of chinos, those lovely shoes. Well, that that's my look. The sunglasses. You know I mean? Sometimes you just got to spice it up, keep things fresh. <laughs> Box fresh. Yeah, a little bit. What have you got here, babe? You made some notes this this week. Yeah, I've got a little pad because mm -hmm. I broke my phone this week. Oh, well. Smashed my phone. Did you throw it at a skirting board? No, I just, I was walking down the stairs on the way to the airport and dropped my phone. It smashed so the screen wouldn't work and it's been really tricky to kind of do anything really. Like, I, for, you know, totally forget that. I don't know how to get anywhere that ways. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's part and, and of you, can, isn't it? Does anyone know how to use a sat-nav in a car? Because they're so hard. <laughs> mm. I can't use my the sat-nav in the car. It, it it comes up in like Atlanta and stuff like that. When I type in a, a destination, it's like Colorado or something. I'm like, what the hell? Mm. That way so, you went to Dover when you came to watch the play at Stoke. <laughs> yeah. So I'll put, you know, sit on the driveway, type it into Waze, destination set, clip it on the thing, off you go. Mm. You know, Places that I go to on a daily basis, I couldn't even get there without my phone. I was like, oh my God, mm. it's ridiculous how much we rely on phones and, you know, having to plan to meet people at a certain time. Mm. And then there was so much traffic, I was late. Like, what did we even do without 
bones. No, well, you you can't function very well. Um, but what I've realised now is uh, this leads me nicely onto my one of the week. Really, yeah. um, is that when Abby is has broken her phone or, or lost offline. Her phone, um, when she's offline, um, <laughs> she's not offline because she just texts mine, and um, it's not just for like, oh, I just need to send a text and give it straight back. It's like I'm just going to speak to Kaz for two and a half hours <laughs> <laughs> and do what I do anyway on my phone, but just with, on yours, and I, you just, I just don't have one. When she hasn't got one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you're not so, as phony as me. You are phony. I've noticed that on this podcast. <laughs> not phony. <laughs> Phonish, then. Uh, um, well, I just, yeah, I don't use it as much as you. Definitely not. But No, because you don't speak to your friends. You don't reply to texts. You don't read emails. You don't have Instagram. <laughs> so you do- don't use your shared calendar. <laughs> don't, exactly. <laughs> don't use the bloody calendar. So I actually don't even know why you don't answer the phone to me. So, why do you have a phone? I don't know. That's a valid point. For your backup. For your emergency phone. Yeah, it's, just, it's yeah. a backup phone for you. I like taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Not that much, though. <laughs> don't really know. I quite like how on the group chat, Abby didn't mention that she was using your phone, though. So, we'd just talk quite aggressively to, to people well, this on the group this is what chat. happened the other day, honestly, yeah. right? It's like, all of a sudden, I went really aggressive. <laughs> like, like, pizza's other pints. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did I was I talking the best one her? she did the, uh, it was the gardener um, can I just say <laughs> this is the best one I am so sick to death of you know people take advantage of our good nature I think mm-hmm. so yeah we were paying someone to do some maintenance right and they didn't do the job and usually Abby would would, would just text them right but she's done it off my phone but she's done it in my language <laughs> So she's one. What she thinks is like lad chat. So she's gone. Um, All right, mate. Uh, <laughs> this hasn't been done. This hasn't been done. Um, sort it out. Uh, all right. Cheers, geese. Or oh, you're fired, geese. <laughs> two kisses at the end. Yeah, two kisses. I, when I'm always There's so ten- many mixed signals going on. <laughs> don't ever pretend to be me. Just say, look, it's Abby on Pete's phone. No, because sometimes this. people don't listen to me. I think, you know, if. If you b- throw a bit of authority in, maybe they'll do the job. But like, I'm sick of turning up to a dead garden. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it out there. So I fired him on Pete's phone. Did you? Yeah. As as me. <laughs> so I, when I turned up, he'd been fired. Um, I didn't actually know about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, geese. Fire geese. He's like that. <gasps> <laughs> he must have thought I've been in the weather spoons at the airport. No, because I, I just think sometimes if you send the text message to go, oh God, we best we best make sure everything's okay, everything's good. If you know if Pete's texting because yeah. he don't listen to me because I've like mm. cried to him and everything, you know, mm. and they just don't care. You know, I've got this pad. I like putting pen to paper, and <laughs> I'm. Um, you know, going through some notes, and I've, I've, there's something that you've written in this pad. Oh no! Sacrifices. Daddy made lots of sacrifices. Daddy made lots of sacrifices. Okay. Is that... Why did you write that? I don't know. It's obviously <laughs> a a, sacrifices. It's a, it's a... Daddy made lots of sacrifices. It's like lo- I think it's I not wrote. Even me. I wrote a script. Um, and I must have started on that and then realised I probably can't take that. I, I did a talk in school, didn't I? Do you remember that? Are you calling yourself Daddy now? <laughs> Daddy's got it here for you. <laughs> um, I wrote a, like a, a speech to the kids about like kind of making sacrifices and like to, to succeed. Go on, give us a rendition. Um, Daddy made lots of sacrifices <laughs> to make it. You can't at football. say Daddy to young children. I'm talking because... to my own child. I'm not talking to all the older kids. So you wrote a script for your own child. I don't. I don't know because no. I wrote. I don't know why I wrote that, but I must have been giving a lesson to one of my children about making sacrifices to um, succeed. No, that's. Well, what that's who else a... is it for? I don't know. Da- I said Daddy. It's for, the ki- it's for the kids. Sacrifices. Daddy made lots of sacrifices. <laughs> Good lesson, I think. Great lesson. If they read that in their book, they'd go, oh, yeah, I need to make sacrifices so I can be like Dad. There's so much parenting that goes under the radar in this house. Oh my God. <laughs> you don't see. My God. Those sports, they race don't win themselves, do they, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> themselves, I'll tell you that now. 
you're not head to toe in Gucci for no reason. You got to make sacrifices. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, who are you? The other one that I've done this week, which has really tickled me, was um, we're obviously planning Crouch Fest at the moment on the Peter Crouch pod. And uh, she's helping and, do, you know, doing some good work. Uh, but she said, I know, I know what we should do. And I said, what? She said, um, we'll just get Joshua and Fury to fight. <laughs> I said, pardon? <laughs> which is Crouch Fest. We just get them to fight, like do three rounds or something I said no because I was thinking it's about a 150 million pound fight that one no because I was thinking you, you've met and, and fighting and... Saudi Arabia or something no because I was thinking it can't be done it's like the biggest fight going well like, I was just trying to think of like the football connection you know and it's I know idea. Tyson had you know a song out for the World Cup and you, you've met Anthony Joshua quite a few times and yeah. I thought you know as a like you know, because on the Peter Crouch pod, they've done like the whole darts thing. I thought mm. we could do like a bit of a boxing competition and get like Joshua and Fury to fight. <laughs> it's like... a lovely idea. I mean, and you know, if Eddie Hearn, if you're if you're listening, you know, if you, if you want to put it on at Crouch Fest, we we would would happily do it for a small fee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that was as ridiculous as it sounded, but there you go. Well, it's your sporting knowledge that I love. Well, that leads me on to my wine. Oh no. You making me watch sports documentaries? Nice like I'm sitting on the on the plane, like Pete's crying to quarterback, <laughs> like crying his eyes out. Don't know if you've seen it. It's I've seen that before. It looks really weird. good. Oh, it's so boring. My she God. was bored stiff. I was like, oh my God. Like, I thought I could entice her with like kind of their lives and stuff like that because you see a bit of the home life, and I thought that might kind of entice you. But there was a lot of kind of sport. A bit too much sport for you. No, it's just I just don't. S- you know, it's like rugby to me. It just makes no sense. It's just so violent. <laughs> Running around, basically playing bulldog. Yeah. You know what you used to play in the schoolyard yeah, where yeah. you just barge into each other to like get the, cross the line or get the ball, whatever. Yeah. It's basically just a glamorised bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> this, and then they add a little glamorized bit... Glamorised bulldog. So, but, but, uh, quarterback, what is the actual... Soccer. It's called soccer, isn't it? No, soccer's like our football. Uh, not, not um, football. It's, it's called football. football. It's called football. Sorry. Yeah, they say football. Yeah. They they call it football, but it's American football. American football, but it's rugby and rounders mixed in, yeah. basically. Okay. Rugby and cricket mixed together cricket. with a bit with a bit of old that throw things quite crickety. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> I I don't know. I don't care. I, I don't care. But it was <laughs> the I thought it was dullest thing I've ever oh, seen. Well, it's, I'm not a Pete's huge like crying, NFL American crying his eyes out, and you know when you can't <laughs> cry my eyes out. You were, and you know when you can't. How was I crying? How you can't crying hear about? when you've got earpods in. You yeah. can't hear the noise that you're making. So I'm just sitting next to breathing like that and. <laughs> Because you're crying to quarterback. I was so emotional. I was was just, I like seeing people achieve stuff. It does, it does, it gives me a good feeling, especially in sport. The last dance was phenomenal. Yeah, that's what I thought I could entice you because you quite like Neymar as well. You quite like the Neymar documentary. Yeah, but that wasn't really about football, was it? Well, it was a lot of off field stuff. That's what I mean. It's like if it goes to sport, she she loses interest. (laughs) But it's hard because I want so many what I want to watch, like Match Point, the tennis one, quarterback. You know, there's so many like football documentaries that I want. I want to watch, and I've, my list is piling up. And I'll keep. I'll keep I keep. I really like the um, Sarah Alex Ferguson one. Yeah, that was good. that was good. But my list is piling up, and it's like I feel like out the loop when people are talking about it, and I'm like, oh no, I was doing fucking Kardashian, <laughs> or like you know, I was watching Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> You love Grey's Anatomy. Dr. McDreamy. We think you can't knock it. We think we're their mates. Yeah, oh, you do. Your foreign accent was out in full force as well on this trip. Mm. Which, uh, the fact that I said it was a bit of a nick, you didn't, obviously don't give a shit. No. But listen, you know, Ross, Ross lived out in Spain, didn't he, for three years. He couldn't even say please in Spanish. That's poor for all. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that coming a mile away. I did. <laughs> you speak Catalan as well, don't you? <laughs> No, oh, well, no. I thought you did. <laughs> so just Spanish, Spanish, Spanish Portuguese. Portuguese. Hola, Rio, ¿cómo estás? Estamos aquí grabando un podcast con mi primo Abby, su marido Pedro y Juan, el productor, asistente. John, the producer. Asistente. <laughs> <laughs> Super, Ross. Could have done with you out there when Mar- I was going. Ma- there. My marido is... Husband. Yeah, I know. I know that. Because I learned that in my lesson. <laughs> 
Because yeah, she she taught me how to say sorry to my husband. No, I said I said to her, "How can I yep. say my husband is a childish baby?" <laughs> and she wouldn't tell me. So which is which babies aren't childish? <laughs> childish adults. <laughs> which babies aren't childish? My marido is finito. Oh, childish baby. No wonder you're crap at Portuguese. <laughs> a fucking childish baby. <laughs> A child or a baby. <laughs> well, I was referring to you as an adult being a childish baby. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm dealing with. I can't think straight today. Should yeah. we cheers to our wine? Oh, uh, yeah. Cheers. We were in Portugal with our friends and we were, you know, we were talking about Whose life would you swap with? I remember, yeah, it was a good conversation. I enjoyed it, actually. It went on for ages. Yeah. It was quite thought-provoking. Well, like, so if you can't be yourself, mm. but you can pick anyone. Yeah. Because, you know, watching, you like, the last dance and the quarterback thing. I wouldn't be a quarterback, though. Wet. Would you be a man? <laughs> I probably am a bit of a man, anyway. Quite, I'm quite, like, a but you say tomboy, to, you it? say to me sometimes, like, oh, it's such a bore, like, being a girl. When you get, you have to get your hair, you know, your hair done. And yeah, you because have to, I, I hate ages. getting ready. Yeah. So I like, hate getting ready. I hate doing my hair. I hate doing my makeup. I hate getting nails done. I hate, you know, it's, a man just gets up and goes. Yeah. Wash I mean, and go. I, I, I wouldn't be a, a girl, I don't think. Um, Even no. for a day. <laughs> Maybe for a day. <laughs> Even for five minutes? <laughs> Even for 30 seconds? Uh, no, because it, you know, it doesn't, you don't, you're not under that pressure, are you? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, let's move on. Don't worry. Um, no, I wouldn't be under a Under the pressure? Is that like... Uh, on the bottom? <laughs> no, no, no. No. <laughs> No, I'm talking about obviously the pressure of a man to like perform, isn't there? Whereas you know, a, 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 there isn't that pressure for a, for a female. Depends. It depends what relationship you're in, because some men don't do anything and make the girl do everything. Mm. Cool. What what relationship that be? <laughs> <laughs> I want to come back to that guy. <laughs> I don't have to work. I just, I just turn up. <laughs> I just, I don't have to work. I just turn up. I'm not performing. I'm not performing. Anyone? Never Mate, mind listen, you. when you look like that, you don't have to perform. Don't have to. Well, um, <laughs> wait, it's a little bit out. Don't touch me. Why not? What are you talking about? There you go. Try to look after you. Um, okay, well, listen, let me stop you there. I think, we, well, we've got some audience ones, who they'd be. So let's go with them first. I've got a message from Linda from Dublin. Uh, she's about to go on a Hindu tomorrow and she said I would be Tom Hardy because I'd look at myself in the mirror all day. I think because I'm going on this Hindu, my willy, my <laughs> mind, sorry, not my willy, uh, my mind has to be willy orientated. Mm. Slut. <laughs> Pete? <laughs> could not say that. <laughs> Tom Hardy, yeah, he's he's quite a you know he's a favourite with the women, isn't he? Well, he is, yeah, and he's he parked your actor. car once, yeah, and that's not a euphemism. Euphemism? <laughs> a euphemism. Well, I hope it's just no. I w not. I got stuck in a multi-story car park. I got too close to the concrete barrier, and he helped me get out. And I was so stressed and freaking out and blah blah blah, and I didn't realise it was him till after the ordeal. And then I was like, oh my god, that was Tom Hardy who helped us. But yeah. Tom Hardy, Ray mm. Parker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, another one here. My husband, just to see um, what it's like to have everything done for you, food made, not to hear the kids at night from Shawnee. She Shawnee? likes to be her husband because she likes to just not be able to hear all the stuff she hears. I do think me men get it easier. Yeah. I do. <clears throat> well, that's a... You know, I think I think it's got better for women over the years. That might have been the case. No, just even not even like with regards to like rights and you know jobs and all of that 
kind of thing. I, I just think actually the physicalities of being a man is so much easier than being a, a girl. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't have to get ready, you know, it doesn't take as long, does it? It doesn't like, there's lots of other reasons as well. Childbirth. Childbirth, period, periods. periods. <laughs> they look like a right pain Puberty. in the ass, quite literally. <laughs> but But then the flip side of that is it's actually quite a privilege to be a woman, you know, God chose the female to have the kids because obviously we're better than men. Is that how you see it? Yeah. Or he wouldn't want to, you know, inflict say, that on a man. We want to inflict that because he's probably probably more proud of so, the man. No, but would you not? Would you not <laughs> like the feeling to have a baby growing inside you? I'm comfortable with creating a baby and not carrying it. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, but has it never crossed your mind of what it would feel like, or not once? Really? Mm. No, I think it's an incredible thing. Um, but like, I think it's an incredible thing to could like, you know, feel that I've kind of put that from afar. <laughs> yeah, you know, into somebody that you Don't love. Don't be like trying to <laughs> claim it like it's yours. Like I've done that. Well, it is. I literally just put I put it in you. <laughs> Without me, you, you, it wouldn't it wouldn't be there. Tell her to fucking Mary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a few if thoughts believe, on that. Will as you well. believe that one? <laughs> well, <laughs> got a few thoughts on that as well. But... No, but you can't. So, is that how you is that how you view a pregnant woman? Look at us from afar and be like, "I did, that. I did that. I built that. I built that. I built that." I built That's that. literally what every man All does. that is because of me. <laughs> I created that. I created that. Like, so when a baby's born, I, I you gave look at it? I gave you the gift of life. <laughs> Oh my god! I have, I have, I can't believe we've gone seventeen years without even discussing this. So, when the baby is born, are you like I did that? Yeah, hundred percent. I can't believe. Well, that. I did that, no. No, of course I did. But you didn't. You, you. Well, you did. You carried my child and gave birth <laughs> yeah. to it, and I thank you every day for that. But I created it. Came out of me. It came out of you as like a little tadpole that you can't even see unless you've got a, mic a microscope. Yeah, ba baby, the baby. You didn't. I, make... I put a baby in you. That's exact. That's the truth. No. You carried it for me no. and gave it back. No. <laughs> I cannot believe this. Every every eyelash, every bone, um, every skin yeah. No, cell, obviously, it picked up. You know, some eyeball, some, some stuff along the way. Every from organ. You. I made 100%, 100%. that. I made that. Not you. No, hundred percent. Like obviously, the you know the baby that I gave to you. You know, then obviously has your traits as well. You know, I grew fr a, from your womb. It you you gave me a tadpole. I was the one who turned it into a, a human. Yeah, which is incredible. You you grew it. You know, it's like um, I don't know. It's like it's like what frog spawn. Or, you know, it's like it's like you, you you put it there, don't you? And then the the, the lady kind of fertilizes it. That's not what happens. Well, yeah, I'm not. I'm not denying, you know, they're your children, but they're your children because <laughs> I gave you them. <laughs> oh my god, I'm flabbergasted by this. Next one. You think? No, it's. it's this, I'm already having a joke. This could be a podcast at the time. Obviously, I'm I had, a joke. <laughs> you had I had no contribution apart from the sperm cell. The, apart the from baby. the sperm. Apart from the baby I put in there. <laughs> I had no contribution right for the baby I gave you. It wasn't a baby that you gave me. It was. You gave me that a piece sperm of sperm. Is that yeah? But without that sperm, there's no baby. Yeah, but you so carried you can, it fantastically well. You've got sperm well. in you all the time. You haven't got loads of babies. No, but you know we're it was not... me who turned it into a baby, not you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. The female. It's us women who do that. Potato, potato. Let's move on to the next one. Mm. Mm. But you know we've got four gorgeous ones, and we we love them so much. <laughs> Oh, I love you so much. Um, oh. <laughs> Number three, my ex-wife. It'd be nice to see my money again for a few hours. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Andrew, that was a belter. <laughs> Andrew sounds bitter. <laughs> Say he probably is. I think there's a few out there. That's funny. Uh, number four, uh, Beyonce, to see if all the rumours about her and Jay-Z are true. What rumours? Kate Middleton. What's because the rumours of Jay-Z and Beyonce? That they're married. I don't know. The rumours that they're married. Do you see if they're true? <laughs> well, they are married, aren't they? <clears throat> Could be a rumour. 
God, I just, you know, make your own minds up on that. But she also goes on to say Kate Middleton because who doesn't want to know what really goes on? With Big Willie. <laughs> the future king of England, you mean? Uh, David Attenborough, just because he's a cool guy that gets some pretty cool stuff done. That's Emma. David Attenborough's a good one. What yeah. a life he's had. Yeah. But I, I imagine he's got a lot of fear. You know, and he's he probably mm. feels like he's banging his head against a brick wall. You know, he's warned us. Mm. He's warned the human race for so long about, what you know, global warming and the effects it's having on the planet and animals. And no one's listening to him. That must be really difficult. But mm. what, I, I, I'd love to be David Attenborough. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, incredible life. Mind you, he's actually there on a lot of them. Well, he's probably he's in, in the, the studio. He's in the BBC with the... Microphone? Yeah, he, he probably is now, but I mean, back in the day, he was, he was travelling a lot because you saw him there, didn't you? Yeah, he's done his fair share. I, I saw saw, him he's seen there. a few animals in his life. I saw him. No, no, I mean, like, you see him on the telly. Oh, he so is just, there. Like, he is did there. Um, when, when, when did I see him in the Antarctic? <laughs> <laughs> I love David Attenborough. Right, on, a, on a hangover the next day, watching kind of life or planet Earth. What do you phenomenal. like watching them? Um, do you like. The underwater, do you like land or sea? Oh, that's a big question. Land, the big animals. Do you like Lions, but, but the tigers, I, I do hyenas. like seeing underwater stuff. Rainforests are pretty amazing. Rainforests, the one. Can be, yeah. All right, uh, another, another, number five. Uh, better one on the Freaky Friday vibe. Uh, your mum and your missus swap bodies. The only way to get it back to normal is you have to sleep with one of them. Which one are you choosing? Crouch, you respond. <laughs> Oh, that's an obvious question. Obvious me. answer. You would obviously your mum and your missus to get what? Yeah, but so have you seen the film Freaky Friday? So you'd have so to the mum and daughter swap bodies. I haven't seen it. I wondered why it was called Freaky Friday. <laughs> it, it's um, Jamie Lee Curtis, the body, and is it Lindsay Lohan as well? Lindsay Lohan. Mm. So so it'd be your body, my mum's brain, and my mum's body and your brain. Yeah. <laughs> That is disgusting. <laughs> Perverted. Mm. I can't. He's, he's, of course he hasn't put his name to it. <laughs> yeah. Pervert. Oh. Ross. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It's it's your body and, and hopefully a quiet mother. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk more about David Attenborough and your uh, yeah. well, lowering the tone I, significantly. It was the, that was the question. I didn't want to answer it. But I felt like I had to. Okay, all right, let's get into it. W would you go like back in time to like Sinatra or Marilyn Monroe? Well, this is the or, would thing. you not want to be Marilyn Monroe? I wouldn't. I wouldn't personally. Wouldn't like to be female. I, I, I can't believe that's so adamant. No, not not adamant. I mean, Marilyn Monroe or like you know, I'm a big fan of Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like Madonna. I'm not going to lie. I, you know, it, it has crossed my mind. <laughs> like a virgin. <laughs> 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 you could be Madonna. Is that where you got your virgin quote from? I'd then? like to. I'd listen. Inspired she's by Madonna. An incredible artist well, she, of yeah. a generation. Let's be honest. Come on, some b absolute belters. George Sun Michael, though. Pete, we were watching Wham last night. You, ever, you know what? Oh, is that, 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 that documentary? Oh, How good my God. is that? It's unreal. But you know what? He's such a troubled life, didn't he? You know, yeah. like, there's a lot of it. You know, not being able yeah, to come you, out like but that. But you'd be troubled if you were if you were hiding your sexuality yeah, because you felt like you couldn't. Be who you are. That is traumatic. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying if you want to be someone, you don't want to have that kind of like that issue. You know, mm. of course, I totally agree with you. Like George, he's had a troubled life, but that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't want to choose a troubled life. Obviously, no. genius though. Uh, Madonna's had a troubled life though. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, but it's, it's there's been a lot of good in there as well. <laughs> but Marilyn Monroe again, quite tragic. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that was tragic. She was sad the whole time, wasn't she? Yeah, and even when you watch it, Elvis, like you think, oh, Elvis, you go, go into it, goes, that's amazing. I think amazing, Elvis, Elvis had the worst life. And, and died early as well, you know. But like, obviously, but, but, the, but, you incredible know, the, highs. You, don't, you don't have to do it forever, though. You could just do it for a week. But all those all those yeah, well, kind of tragedies okay. come from like outside influence. They, they were all so controlled by people and manipulated. Mm. You know, that kernel, like what he did to... Elvis mm. that was just but you could also say like you know you'd like to be Elvis at, the, at his peak for a week wouldn't you when he's young good looking doing all kinds mm. would be good I think it'd be good to be um, what's his name 
What's his name? I said the other day. It's not Kobe Bryant. The other one. Michael Jordan. I, I, I'd be Michael Jordan. No, that's that, that's hundred percent. I, I, I would be Michael Jordan. If, why are you just taking my one? I said, I'm not taking your one. Yeah, I said that, and you just taking it off me. When? When we had this conversation, I said Michael Jordan would be the best one. Yeah, but I said Michael Jordan as well because I watched that Save the Last Dance. So we're going to agree on on that. Yeah, but you don't you don't particularly like sport. But do you think you'd like sport? I if like you're Michael basketball. Jordan? <clears throat> I love basketball actually. Okay, there's a point to it. Okay, they pass it to each other and get it in that net. Alley hoop. They do. They do. <laughs> in the hoop, it makes sense. It's. <laughs> Logical. It's yeah. a logical game. It's a logical game. But like, I, I just think like someone, I mean, he is elite kind of sports. He's elite. And he, he's, you know, his attitude, he looks like he's kind. He looks after everyone. I thought he was quite tough. Like, What, he's so hard. He, but like, I, I, I wouldn't say it's an overriding level. characteristic because he was kind. Not kind, but like a, a team player. Yeah. Mm, eventually. <sighs> I think... <clears throat> I think to be that elite, you've got to be single-minded. And he was ruthless to some people that weren't pulling, like, good enough. Yeah, but that's that's right. Yeah, yeah that's I don't, I I don't disagree. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's it, Like, he is an absolute genius. Mm. But, like, there's a few other ones up there as well, like like Messi or, like, Ronaldo. I don't think you, you could pick another footballer, Pete. You've reached every height with your career, let's be honest. No, listen, this is a, this is a made-up game. I wouldn't change my life. I'm I wouldn't tell you that now. I wouldn't change it. I, mm. didn't, I wouldn't. I feel he like actually I'm said if he lucky. died tomorrow, he'd mm. be happy with that. Sure, do all. <laughs> it wasn't like you know. I don't want to die, obviously. But what I said was, if if something did tragically happen, or you know, I have I lived my life to the full. Yes. What would it obviously leaving you, leaving the kids would obviously upset me and upset them. Yeah, that's but the only reason I can't die. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking, have I lived like kind of my dreams and have I done all I can to be happy? Yeah. I would genuinely say yes. And yeah. I think that, that's obviously like, I feel very privileged to kind of be in that position, but that's literally how I feel. I yeah, feel but like, that's like a minority of the way. Like we were saying is, like, yeah. you know, it, it's like quite a fun game to say like who you would swap with and all these people who've done the most incredible things, you know, because it's even like amazing, like, you know, inventors and you know people who've changed the world for like the good oh john said henry the eighth before henry the eighth yeah bloody um gout and everything syphilis yeah syphilis? Wives, syphilis. He, he killed all his wives wasn't he mm? eight wives yeah, divorce beheaded dad divorce you know beheaded one two divorce beheaded two. dad divorce beheaded survived said that we had six wives killed two the eight wives didn't he? no he had six six did he divorce one Catherine of aragon Killed Anne Boleyn. Killed. But he was going out with Anne Boleyn's sister as well. Have you seen that? The other Boleyn sister. That is a good film too. That is a good film, yeah. Henry VIII. I don't think I'd be Henry I don't VIII. think that's a good era to live in. Me neither. I said that. It's no so toilet filthy. roll. No toothpaste. No electricity. I said no deodorant, but that wouldn't bother him anyway. <laughs> Bow boy. <laughs> P.I. Barocas. I think, it, I think it'd be good to be like in the, in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. Seven, well, Mick Jagger, well, that's a good one. Mick Jagger, like, yeah, hundred percent. He, he's Mick uh, he's lived a, lived a dream, and he's d doing still okay now, isn't he? He's doing more than okay. That's what I mean. Like you know, he's, he, I mean, what a that's a that's a crazy life. Style icon, yeah, incredible musician, frontman. What about would you be anyone kind of like f in fashion or like a singer? Shania. Shania Twain. Twain. Do you remember when I said that and Dan was like, you'd be Shania Twain? <laughs> Out of everyone. <laughs> it's not a terrible one. Hasn't her husband left her though? Yeah, she's just heartbroken. That's I don't want any I mean. heartbreak. That's what I mean. I don't want a broken heart. Too many broken hearts in the world. Broken hearts, not the future. Um, I tell you, a good celebrity couple is Goldie Hawn and Kate Russell. Mm. Yeah. You know, they've never married, but they just look so in love, don't they, still now? Mm. What about, you know, because obviously you talked about Yellowstone and stuff like that. Would you be, would you like to have been born on a ranch like Yellowstone? 100%. Like, you don't have to be famous, that's what I mean, you don't have to be famous. You just live on a ranch, I'm ride wondering, I'm wondering if I actually have. Mm. In a past life. I'd just, I'd just... Uh, Ride past on a horse. Howdy, girl. <laughs> oh, it's my favourite accent, that cowboy. Hop on. 
What y'all doing down there? What y'all What's doing? What your pretty little ass doing down there? <laughs> Come on, sit on my horse. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly Parton. I'll just get you on the back. Dolly Parton's a good one. Yeah, but you, you'd like to live that life, wouldn't you? Kind of. But would you, though? What really kind yeah, of turning kind to, of, to horses that, that in day? Kind of thing but would you would you would you kind of strive for something else if you lived in that world? Do you know what I mean, if you were from that world, that's all you've ever known. Would you think about? Oh, I wonder what it's like to live in London. No. Oh, yeah. Would we look good as as like a celebrity couple? Would well, like Justin Timberlake and Britney, or J Lo and P Diddy? Remember that was a good time. J Lo. That's not a bad one. Like I'd take P Diddy all day. Bet you would. Oh, I'm real. <laughs> I, I'd you be, be J-Lo? Oh, my God, oh, yes. let's do it. <laughs> How real is this game? <laughs> J-Lo? Um, so you want to swap me for J-Lo? <laughs> no, I'd like to be P. Diddy. I wouldn't swap you for anything in the world. You're so horrible. You're better than J-Lo. Fact. <laughs> what about with each other? Would you ever swap each other's just for a day? So you could take up golf for a little bit, Ab. You wouldn't like to be me for a day, I don't think. Well, I'd play it differently. <laughs> 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 I'd play it differently I would you look stressed out you don't need to be stressed out just chill with it I'd definitely like I'd I'd like I could I could be you <laughs> you couldn't be me what do you mean I couldn't be you <laughs> you could be me I could you easily could be. be you yeah you could be me basically just to think of all the skills you'd have <laughs> <laughs> it's dagger eyes <laughs> I'd like to look like you. If I was a girl, I'd, I'd want to look like you. I'd want to look like... I'd have your face. Genuinely, I would. I'd have I, your face. If I was, <laughs> is that it? <laughs> Just my face? No. I'd, and your, height, your height is a massive, you know, plus point. If I was a girl... Six like, five is my absolute minimum. Yeah. Tiny. Six four, isn't it? Mm. Your height. It's like... When we talked about tall men, you said David Beckham. Like, he's a midget. He's like 6'1", eh? <laughs> six foot at least. I don't think he is. I he's think he's six probably like... Five. Five. I played with him, you know, and he's, he's probably he's like 5'11", but says he's 6 foot. He's one nah, of them. he's definitely 6 foot. Do you reckon? You know yeah, yeah, he's tall. He's, he's quite tall. Would you be like a president, kind of world leader, or like royalty? That tickle you fancy or not? Imagine being the president of the United States. A bomber. I'd love to be a bomber. That's, what a mean, like, that's pretty. That'd be pretty good. No other ones, really. Kennedy. Mm, got JFK. Shot. Yeah, he'd be a good one. He, he did get a shot, though. I know, but he yeah. was nice, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> no. Don't fancy him. <laughs> what about... <laughs> I don't fancy him. <laughs> <laughs> don't no, fancy don't fancy him. being him. <laughs> Prime Minister? No, absolutely not. Think you Ball make eight. a crack in Theresa May. <laughs> You look a bit like Theresa May. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Theresa May just looks like a little newborn pigeon to me. <laughs> little bird. Like, like it's fed. <laughs> That's what she just reminds me. I'm like beaky. getting fed out of a nest. Oh, yeah. Mm. I actually want to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's got my ideal life. He's got a donkey that runs in his kitchen. <laughs> Can you imagine? A miniature you? donkey. <laughs> you got me running around. He just, he's literally got the dream. He looks incredible as well for 75. Yeah, he looks good. He looks good. I mean, his story is amazing. Obviously, we watched the documentary recently. His story from being like the bodybuilder, like living in Austria and end up being the governor of California via Mr. Universe. That's, that's, like, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. That's like 10 lives in one, isn't it's it? Really? Amazing. It's absolutely incredible. And like the way he kind of visioned it and manifested it mm. is, is, Incredible, I think. But now he's got a, a little Shetland pony that runs into his kitchen. God, I would die for that. Mm. That's why I want to change our floor, Pete. Because it'd slip on us. If a little donkey <laughs> ran in, it'd you slip. You want to change our floor because a donkey would slip? Yeah. Oh, wow. What would you change it to? Stone. Oh, yeah. Do you need a stone that it'd slip on there? Wet. I'm not changing the floor because a donkey could slip. <laughs> that is not a reason to change your floor. <laughs> I haven't even got a donkey, but if I did, I'd have to change the floor. Oh, wow, well, we're just not getting a donkey then, are we? I'm we'll not changing. Leave, leave it outside. I can change my own floor. Need your permission. Well, I'm just not. I just don't want a donkey in the house, really. We've got bunnies and a cockatiel coming next week. <laughs> it's a, a compromise. Like, like a bed. It's a compromise for a puppy. Why didn't you want another puppy? Well, I do. Oh, Pete doesn't. Mm. No, not at all. 
well, I don't particularly want a bunny either, really, but, but you get better two. than a yeah, it's better than a dog. You have to have them in pairs. Bunnies. And you're getting a cockatoo, did you? Cockatiel. What's a cockatiel? A bed. It's a bed. Mm. Mm. I'm I'll give you a I'll give you a cockatoo. <laughs> I'm gonna train it myself. You gotta have it on your shoulder. Mm. This woman oh, on the beach, oh, she had a little cockatiel and was just so well trained. It was like getting the change out the bag and everything for her. Jack loved it, didn't he? Yeah. It went on Jack's shoulder and it was like nibbling his finger. Would you be like David Blaine? Uh, no. I I, David Blaine, right? When he was up in that thing in London for, for ages and he came out and he was absolutely exhausted. And You know, when he went in that ice in New York, he came out and went straight into intensive care. But like, for me, that's not a trick. You know I mean, I could sit in ice and go to intensive care. Mm. If he came out and went, and oh, now I'm fine. Oh, yeah. like, that's a trick. Like he came out, went straight to intensive yeah. care, and they went, "Don't do that again, or otherwise you'll die." I went, "Well, that's not that's not magic, is it?" No. No. But obviously, he's got great tricks as well. But I just don't think that's as impressive as it was so, made out. So you're going with Paul Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Daniels. It's not a bad one. Stephen Mulhern. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I actually love Stephen Mulhern. I can't stand them. Got you? No. <sighs> um, so David uh, Copperfield? No, he's creepy. I, I once saw David Copperfield. Why do these co magicians always get these hot chicks? Maybe they magic them there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I watched David Copperfield in Vegas. Claudia Schiffer. <laughs> I once saw David Copperfield in Vegas, right? And I, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was it was not in a good way. And he was he was did some great tricks, but at the end, the grand, the grand finale was he reunited a man from the audience who had not seen his dad, who lived in Rio. And the only kind of like um evidence that they gave us was the big screen. So they went behind the screen, and on the big screen, him and David Copperfield, the boy, and and we met up with his dad on the beach. They yeah. ran together, they hugged. And the only evidence of when they came back was their feet were wet with sand on it, right? Yeah. And I went, well, obviously, that's, that was black. And then they, as we were walking out, I, I just saw like a couple of the Americans and that they were in tears. <laughs> and I was like, me and my mates were going, well, that was sh like shite, wasn't it? Obviously, they pre recorded that. And they were going, oh my God. They were going, <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> they reunited him with, with his dad. He hasn't seen him for 30 years in Brazil. I was going, I could not believe. He's got a sandbox in the back. Like, you know what, I mean? what the hell? <laughs> Madness. They fall for anything though, don't they? People. What about a fictional character? I don't know. Ariel? Ariel. Barbie? <laughs> Barbie. I watched the Barbie movie today. Mm. Good. That was amazing. Mar I'd be Margot Robbie. That's definitely. Would you? Yeah. As Barbie, would you be Barbie or would you be Margot Robbie? I'd be Margot Robbie as Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be Superman. Superman? Yeah, I think so. I wouldn't. Batman, I just think Batman. Any uh, Batman? Way all over Superman. God, Batman doesn't even have any superpowers. Batman? He, no? he, he like he's human. He's just mental. He, he, he flies, doesn't he? Like Superman. Like yeah, Batman. Laser eyes, like flies, flies. Super strength. Batman. <clears throat> the jaw on him. Yeah, but you could see through. <laughs> You can see through walls, you know, you X -ray, X ray vision. We can fly. It's a bit pervy. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not doing it for perverted reasons. It'd just be handy, wouldn't it? You can see what's going on, you know, supersonic hearing. You can fly. Strongest, strongest man on the planet. Unreal. So I think Superman's a little bit wet for me. How can Superman be wet? You can well, literally. That guy of Smallville is the worst actor, so wet. Yeah, but you're thinking of Clark Kent. I'd, I'd be Peter Crouch, but by night I'd be Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I think Batman's the one. What about if you were in a specific character? What about a superpower? Flying's the one, surely. To heal. Oh, that is a, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, no you one's... or other people? To heal anything like animals or people. Do you think that would come with a lot of pressure though? Like people queuing up your door, like all the way down your door. Like all the way down your street, going, please heal my father, my mother, my son, my boy. You'd have tr you'd have a lot of. Okay, issues. I'll be an invisible healer. Then. <laughs> <laughs> no one knew. No one knew. It's you like a superpower, and... and just you just heal the people that you mm. want to heal. That would be good. Mm. It's a lovely thing. No do. one's. There's no one. 
Well, E.T. I suppose E.T. is a bit like that, isn't he? I thought you say you would like to be E.T. What about your superhero name, Abby? Florence Nightingale would be a good one. If you Goldie Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know my... my we were talking about um, porn names. Mm-hmm. Is, which is, is, it a, is it a porn name or a lap dancer yeah, name? Yeah, porn whatever? name. So your porn name is the name of your first animal mm. and your mother's maiden name. Mm-hmm. So mine would be Goldie Sullivan. Pizza's Buster Dickin. <laughs> Genuinely. Unbelievable. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, I Buster Dickens, phenomenal. I don't Goldie know. Sullivan. That's a film, that, isn't it? Buster Dickin and Goldie Sullivan. <laughs> Busty, Buster Dickin. In the Incredible uh, Gulp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Incredible Gulp featuring Goldie Sullivan and Buster Dickin. <laughs> but my, I don't know why we were talking about our kid. I don't know why we were talking about our, um, our kid's porn name, which is slightly weird, but... What a bizarre conversation. Our, our Sophia's porn name is Jeff Glancy, which is my dad's name. <laughs> Jeffrey Glancy. <laughs> How funny is that? Oh, God. Let's hope she never gets into it for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> Next on stage is Jeffrey Glancy. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, if you want to get in touch with your uh, exotic names, please feel free to email in or get in touch on the socials. Come on, Gucci boy. Give me an agony app. <laughs> Right, here we go. Agony abs. Dear Peter and Abby, I asked my husband who he'd like to play as if we had our own movie. Pete, I know you got to play yourself. I must say it's one of the best films I've seen. No joke. Thank you very much. Uh, Anyway, I said Pierce Brosnan for him, which I can see. I wish he looked more like him, but you can see it working. For me, the little bastard said Margot Robbie. (laughs) I'm too stone overweight. I have short brown hair and have three kids. I have taken offence to this as I couldn't look any further from that Barbie bitch. (laughs) Wow. I now feel like I'm not my husband's type. Do you think I go for a full Barbie makeover or put Ken back in his box? (laughs) Incredible. Margot Robbie, though. Thoughts? The thing with Margot Robbie, like, she's got it all. She's an incredible actress. She's unbelievably good looking and she looks like she's a laugh and, like, a kind person. Yeah, but I don't think he's going to say, you know, to play our... He's going to say someone nice. Yeah, but you have to think of someone who looks remotely like you to play. Yeah. Well, who would play me? Peter O'Toole. Okay. London to Arabia, is that? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I've been called it before. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Tool. What a tool. Pete the tool. Uh, Pete O'Toole. Pete (laughs) O'Toole. Um. I don't want to even ask you who I'm going to be because you're just going to yeah, make me. Yeah, I'm going to piss you off. Let's, let's move away Who from that. would you pick? What would you, <laughs> who would you pick? <laughs> Margot Robbie? Margot Robbie, I'd say. Probably. But that, yeah, that's close. I'm too stoned overweight. I've got four kids. <laughs> no, but like, he's obviously pissed her off, right? Do I need a Barbie makeover? Yes. <laughs> he's pissed her off big time here with this. But I don't think he's doing it in a nasty way. Do you? He might have been trying to save her feelings. Might not Maybe say. he was trying to be complimentary, like the, it doesn't get Whatever better than Margot, Ro- Ro- Margot Robbie. Whatever he says there, do you know what I mean? Like if he says, you know, someone who is too stone of weight and an actress, she'll get pissed off. Oh, you think I'm fat then? I yeah. know, play so, you. Ricky Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like whatever you say, it's going to piss her off. If you go too much, it's like, oh. Okay, so like, using your theory, who would you choose to play me? Margot Robbie, that that works. Shut up, Julia Roberts. No, because Julia, Ro- I love bloody in Pretty Lord. Woman. Yeah, no, but I look nothing like Julia Roberts. You can't pick yeah, someone. I'm just dye her hair blonde. And so she are, you, be you. are you are you going into like acting ability then, or DiCaprio could play me? You know what I mean, but like, close. Mm? It's a silly game. <laughs> it's a stupid game. No it's one should get angry game. about it. It's not a stupid game because there's people who look identical to people. Wait, anyway, you should, what yeah, I'm like saying Kaz, is... like Kaz, Kim Cattrall could, would play Kaz because she's identical she's to... She's an absolute ringer for her, yeah. Yeah, when Kim Cattrall, when she was young, like... I want to know... Do you want to who... also want a good actress, don't you? Yeah, but they're all good. Charlize Theron. Oh, yeah. She could play you. In Monster. I've been called that before yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there's... there's a... Charlize you look Saran. like a film star, so it's easy. Charlize Theron, yeah. I could work at that. Yeah. Interesting. I think I'll be easy on him. Um, uh, it's, it is only a game. It's a dangerous game. All right, let's move on. 
Uh, dear Pete and Abby, I've just been dumped for the past few years. I've been trapped in a magnolia relationship. And, I mean, What's that? Absolutely no idea. Beige. Vanilla. Van yeah, yeah. Oh, is it? Quite a boring relationship. I'm in desperate need to blow away the cobwebs. Here we go. I've never really been the sexually adventurous type, but I'm now 32 and I feel it's now or never. I know I might not... I might come across as a bit promiscuous, but really I'm not. I've only slept with four people and I've been in long-term relationships with them all. I need an opening line for my da dating bio that says I'm a lady in the streets, but a freak in the sheets if you teach me what to do. But catch ya. Fern, 32 from Manchester. So she needs a link for a bio, like on a, what, I don't know, if she's on Tinder or something like that. She, so it's like, she wants to say lady in the street, but a freak in the bed, like you've, you've had pre previously <coughs> in national newspapers. <laughs> Yeah. Quote from this podcast. <laughs> wow. That's that awful. Incredible. That's awful. You yeah. are a lady in the street, but a freak in the bed, aren't you? Sleep in the bed, you said. Sleep in the bed. Flirty and nice with plenty of spice. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually quite good. It's not bad, is it? No, no. Off the cuff. What about something like um give me a give me your recipe and I'll slap you up the best meal or something like that in the bed. <laughs> Fish bag. But better. <laughs> you know, because she said she needs instructions. Too many cocks don't spoil the broth. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell are you today? <laughs> oh. Why doesn't she just write it on like fun seeker, <clears throat> seeking fellow fun seeker, let's learn together, let's climb these mountains together? Nice. But I think, she, I mean, she's she's talking, she wants to be sexually adventurous here. You know? Solid as a rock, love plenty of cock. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you kids say? What do you put on your one, Ross? I don't have one. I do one organically. Yeah, you must have had one in the past. <laughs> <laughs> what, was your, what did yours say? I have not. I have not. <laughs> I've got no online profile. <laughs> Bilingual in life and the bedroom. I'm a cunt. <laughs> I actually, I actually put down, I think I did. Bilinguist. I'm a cunner linguist. Yeah. <laughs> cunner linguist. Cunning linguist. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I don't know what I put on my profile. Um. F f <laughs> f f <laughs> what was it? I was going to say fun, but I'm not fun. fun. I'm actually boring. <laughs> yeah, like boring. Um, and um, asleep by nine. <laughs> I've been oh, called brash in the past. <laughs> but I've been a bit brash in the past. Sleep by nine because I'm exhausted, Pete. Mm. Being freaky has got me in this mess. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just shattered. <laughs> I'm more of a morning person than a night person. <sighs> just be up at early bed, catches the worm. So. <laughs> <laughs> or maggot for that matter <laughs> yes correct that is correct um, oh, we got loads there pick one of those mm. well done. good luck with it Fern <laughs> I think Fern should just get out there be yourself yeah, let's, let's be honest like, it's not it's not about catchy lines is it it's about just being yourself getting yourself out there picking the right guy and going for it sounds so simple Mm. Hi Abby and Pete Firstly I love the pod I can't wait for Tuesdays to roll around So I can laugh my way to work listening to it My Agony, my agony Ab is about my beloved husband Who I married this year His concentration and attention span Amounts to absolutely zero He'll put things down Then not put them away He'll forget things from the shop But my biggest gripe is how much he zones out When he's on his phone there have been countless times when I've had full conversations with him and I have not heard a single word back. The most recent is when I reeled off a shopping list for things for him to pick up and he responded, yeah, I will. Yeah, I'll wear the dog in a bit. He's obsessed with scrolling through Twitter and Instagram reels and watching football and cricket highlights. Now the ashes are on. I'm essentially single. Uh, how, how the hell do I stop and enter this other universe he goes into the minute he gets his phone out? It's like a child with their favourite toy. Help me. I think this, has, this is in a lot of relationships, this one. I know. You know what I mean? It's like this phone problem. Is, it's awful. I hate it, do you? It's just, you get you get in a monotonous kind of scrolling situation. And I, and I do think it's 
becoming a problem with a lot of relationships. And you know we're guilty of it of us we're guilty of it ourselves sometimes. But you know trying to like be present. Like we went to a restaurant the other day, and they had no Wi Fi, and and it said leave you. No, there it was says a picture on the wall. It said no Wi Fi. Leave your phones at the door or something like that. And I thought what a great concept. It, it actually said it said uh, uh, we have no Wi Fi. You're gonna have to talk to each other. I thought it was a good shout. Yeah, I do. Because I think it's, you know, something we struggle with in our houses, like, especially with the kids, like, on the iPads and stuff. It's it's awful. It is, you know, it is bad. You know, like, when we were little, we'd, like, play cards, or, like, play Snap or Uno, and, you know, the kids are just like that on the phone, aren't the they? The kids, like, you talk to the parents, and you find things out, and you, you, that's what going for dinner's about, isn't it? And do you remember, we, we, we were having lunch that time, we saw those four kind of young girls, and they did say one word to each other the no. whole meal. And then they got up and left. They just looked at their phones the whole time. Well, you know, doing it's gonna damage how people behave socially. I think, mm. you know, especially all the kids who are on the iPads all the time. Like it, it's not a good thing. There's a time and a place. Like there is times where you like just you need you to sit there and just watch something, and you know because you've got to do something else. You know, it has helped in that, in that regard. But you know, you can't be doing it kind of all day. No. And I do get it with, with relationships. It's a killer. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boring you then, are we? No. Do you get your phone out? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just uh... You are a bit guilty of it. We all are. We all are. I don't want to be. See, so, yeah, I mean, it's a difficult one. And, and I know that kind of men do those out when they're on their phone. You know, like, if you say something to me, like, uh, oh, can you if, you... if you read a shopping list to me and I didn't look up for my phone, there's no way I'm getting that right. No. When I go to the shops. Men zone out in general to women's voices, I think. What was that? <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you have to. There's so much, so much dialogue during the day. <laughs> you can't, can't listen to it all. <laughs> I've only got so much space up there. <laughs> The dialogue is so relentless. Why like, didn't you just go with a quiet girl then? <laughs> well, why didn't you, know, you go with a girl who doesn't talk? Well, no, it's not about not talking. It's just it's kind of the relentless talking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So why didn't you just go with someone no, just, who's quiet? Just someone who's probably more maybe you know. It's not as prolific. stingy with the words. <laughs> you enjoyed today's pod? Yeah. It's quite a different kind of feel, wasn't it? Mm. I feel like I've been. Uh, you know, so it's it's, it's funny, like you know, looking at all these. Lives people have had: Henry VIII, Madonna, um, David Attenborough, Michael Jordan. They've all had incredible lives, but I genuinely don't think you know if if it actually came down to it, if someone stood in front of me now and said you could actually swap with X, Y, Z, I don't think I'd do it. Mm. I, I, I wouldn't swap, and also I think obviously if, I'd love to look like Margot Robbie, but, but you, I'm so you're happy. Not doing too bad yourself. I'm happy in my what. Well, you're saying you want to look like Margot Robbie. You look pretty okay. Pretty okay. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you look stunning. You're not Margot Robbie, but you're all right. No, what I'm saying is you're absolutely beautiful. <laughs> like, people would give, I reckon 99% of the world would give their left arm to look like you. Yeah, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I feel very lucky with my life. I've got the man of my dreams, mm. who I absolutely love. And I've got my four beautiful kids, my dog, my cats. Yeah, and also you know, I think when we, we, you know, our life is 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 enjoyable, right? And we we're, we're incredibly happy. Life is good, and we're 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 we are happy. So that if you said, oh, you actually genuinely would like to swap with someone, it feels like you're being greedy. Like we've had it, we've got a lovely life, and I'm, we're very blessed and fortunate to have that life. But I'm not even talking about like material things. No, neither am I. I'm talking about you know about when love. we were in lockdown, and if you had twenty houses all over the world, or a private jet, or a yacht. You couldn't use any of them. It's about your core group, who you is. And I actually loved it and thought, you know, I could live like this forever. Mm. Yeah. And, that, and, that's and you the thing. felt the same. Yeah. Didn't yeah. You, you know, our, our family, our kids, like, we are very blessed. And, you know, I enjoy coming home, which is, you know, not <laughs> everyone feels the same way. No. You know? No. <laughs> All right. Well, that's another therapy clarity done. Um, I want you to leave us comments on our socials, if you don't mind, because I love reading them. They make me laugh so much. 
Um, you can leave comments on YouTube, reviews on Apple Podcasts, which is, you know, great reading them, isn't it? Yeah. The nice ones. The nice They're all nice. Yeah. Cheers, guys. <laughs>